For critical thinking development, we can look at a staged uh, approach. Um, and there are a number of stages that a, 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 an individual can go through as a critical thinker. The first stage is uh, called the unreflective thinker, somebody who's just starting. Stage two is the challenged th thinker, somebody who's just starting to think, maybe finding it quite difficult. Stage three is the beginning thinker. Stage four, the practicing thinker. This is somebody who's putting into practice some critical thinking skills. Stage five, the advanced thinker. And then stage six is somebody um, who is accomplished a critical thinking. The unreflective thinker is um, somebody who is largely unaware of experiences uh, in the classroom and um, is not able to identify problems and also to rationalize those problems. The unreflective thinker, therefore, um, is not able to assess a situation and therefore, consequently, not able to improve it. The unreflective thinker um, requires uh, somebody to help, therefore, um, perhaps a, a mentor. Um, this could be a colleague, a critical friend. And in, most importantly, the un, unreflective thinker is, um, is, is focusing very much on failure rather than uh, seeing failure as an opportunity for improvement. Um, there needs to be, for the unreflective thinker, an opportunity to consider the implications the, the, and different points of view in order to be a, a successful reflective practitioner. Unreflective thinkers uh, tend to lack things like clarity and being logical as part of thinking. Um, from being an unreflective practitioner, the, uh, an, unre an unreflective thinker, the, the reflective practitioner can move to being a challenged thinker. This is where they're starting to think a little bit more and understand the, the role that thinking plays in their lives. And at this point, the, the thinker, the teacher, is starting to identify problems and trying to understand the causes of problems. Um, challenged thinkers are still, in a way, unreflective thinkers, um, but they are becoming thinkers, um, and therefore they do need still some level of support in order for quality thinking to take place. Um, they're starting to be more deliberate about thinking. Um, um, it's not a natural process. It's something that has to be uh, uh, actually worked on. Um, they recognize also that at this point their thinking is perhaps a little bit flawed and that can interfere with the thinking process itself. Challenge thinkers um, can develop an initial awareness um, about their role as thinkers within the reflective practice process um, and start to understand the assumptions they have um, and the implications of these assumptions on teaching. And um, again, it's involving a level of clarity um, which the unreflective thinker wouldn't have. Um, through the process of thinking at stage two, um, they're starting, the, the reflective practitioner is starting to, to get a feel for certain standards of teaching and to understand that perhaps they're not meeting those standards. The challenge thinker is also developing some understanding of the role of self-perception and self-concept um, for themselves as a teacher and the impact that this has on teaching. At stage two also, the, um, the, the, the reflective practitioner is um, not really thinking about um, the impacts uh, on the students of the process of uh, teaching. For stage three, we've got the beginning thinker. This is uh, where the reflective practitioner is starting to, develop, starting to develop a level of competence as a thinker. Um, the, the thinkers at this point are starting to engage more with the assumptions that they have and are making initial attempts at trying to understand 
um, not only themselves but the whole process of teaching uh, a lot more clearly in order uh, you know, to get some improvement. Stage three is very much based on um, some initial superficial understandings um, about what is involved in teaching. And most importantly, um, for this stage in thinking, um, there is an element of um, change through uh, practice. Um, maybe it could be quite hit and miss, but there is actually um, some action starting to be engaged with. And beginning thinkers, um, unlike the, the, the challenge thinkers, are uh, becoming so more aware that the, the reflective practice um, aspect of their role uh, starts to develop. Um, and this is because they are more aware of the inferences and assumptions and the beliefs that they hold about teaching um, with a lot more clarity and that they can use these as part of um, their role of, as, as a teacher. And beginning thinkers recognize also the need to internalize what is happening uh, in order to process the information a lot more clearly. Uh, rather than it being just external to them, they actually start to own and have responsibility for it. Um, and in this sense, there's a certain precision which is being developed uh, about the information being processed and the, the relevance of it in relation to the role of the teacher. Um, the stage four aspect of thinking is... Um, much more developed, where the reflective practitioner is taking more charge, more responsibility of the thinking process itself. And they not only recognize that problems exist, but they're beginning to think about those problems within a bigger context, not just from a personal point of view, but from a whole school point of view. And this is based on um, a lot more regularity in terms of thinking. It's not something that just happens once. It happens all the time throughout the day. And this can therefore lead to uh, improvement and, um, uh, and a lot more systematic way of thinking. Um, and because of that systematic way of thinking, um, the teacher starts to become much more proficient. And this proficiency helps the teacher um, internalize and embed learning and thinking. Um, practicing thinkers, unlike the beginning thinkers, um, are developing more knowledge um, about their roles as teachers, um, acquired knowledge and also linking their practice back to theory that uh, they've studied. Um, and there are assumptions and inferences in relation to those theories and the acquired knowledge which are being uh, uh, developed and uh, the teacher is developing much more clarity about these assumptions and beliefs. Practicing thinkers um, recognize um, that um, thinking, critical thinking, has a certain level of, um, uh, of being systematic about it. Um, it is something that needs to be worked at and developed as a skill rather than something that happens naturally. They clearly recognize also the, the natural tendency for us as, as humans to um, put ourselves at the center of anything that happens, you know, the egocentric aspect of thinking. Um, and there can also then be some sort of self-deception about it. Um, the teacher thinking, it's not my fault, it's the student's fault. Um, and that level of critical thinking is quite significant um, because if that can be reached, then level five is where good habits are, in terms of critical thinking, are beginning to show real dividends in terms of um, improved in, uh, teaching and the uh, improved experience of the students. Um, their th thinking is very significant then in a number of domains and um, shows a certain depth at this point, which is not seen earlier at other, other levels. So advanced thinkers are good, general, all-round thinkers, and they have a good command of themselves and their own role, their own perception of themselves in the classroom. 
Um, so the egocentric aspect is understood and reasoned and um, the teacher understands that uh, teaching is not just a one-sided perception. The advanced thinkers then are very keen about thinking. They have very clear insight and um, they're aware of, of other perspectives um, ab around thinking. Um, the accomplished thinker, this is where although thinking is very technical, it is actually very uh, natural for uh, this level of thinker. They're able to monitor and revise and um, adapt very quickly in relation to experiences in the classroom. And this leads the, the reflective practitioner to be able to strategize very quickly in order for continual improvement to occur. Um, it is conscious, but it's also very intuitive. It feels very natural for the thinker at this point. And this level can only be achieved with experience. Um, you would not expect uh, a new teacher to be able to, read, uh, to reach this level of critic criticality until they've had some number of years of experience. Um, and therefore, it's linked very much to their lives as teachers, their experiences of teachers, and the range of experiences that they have, the problems that they are confronted by. <laughs>